we're trying to push as much content as we can out right now. Basically, we're uh, when like uh, winter is over and stuff, we're gonna be doing a little bit of everything. We've already released one urban exploration video. Not forever who watched that. Um, we're gonna be doing paranormal investigations. As excited as Ty is about that. Um, we're basically gonna like these unsolved and upstate is, is just part of a series. We're gonna be doing a bunch of different videos what like that. What he means is we're just gonna do a pair of a normal investigations. Just two of them. Nothing crazy. <clears throat> Not no major shit. So no, no. He, we, I, I mean, ghost hunting. <laughs> He's wrong. But we'll get to that once uh, the weather permits it. <clears throat> One thing we're gonna touch on right now. I'm gonna change the screen size, and we're gonna we're gonna bring this one up right now because move this over here. So. I'm gonna pull up the chat here in a second. If you guys can hear us good, let us know. Anything you'd like. Uh, <clears throat> Any feedback right now is good. Like, this is our first podcast ever, so. We're going to go ahead and talk about this right now. Make sure they can see that good. This was our most viewed episode so far, for obvious reasons. It's very close to home. Um. <clears throat> So, the article that I actually pulled up and used for the video for Colin gave me information that I hadn't even found elsewhere. And, uh, I've done, like, my own in detective work, per se, on the whole Colin situation. And, uh, <clears throat> the whole situation is weird, so, like, during the video, I had to try to stick to the, the facts that are released and what the article said rather than what I've learned myself because it's all hearsay and I don't want to yeah know. unfortunately we can only report on facts not stuff that we are sure are facts yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I found it weird in that article um it said that Austin Tui had stopped twice I didn't know that originally for one I didn't see that in there. yeah he uh he, he said he stopped leaving the party. He saw Colin. And he went to Pierce Field. And then he stopped and saw Colin as he came back through. And spoke to him both times and offered him a ride. <clears throat> and the second time he is... How long does it take to get to Pierce Field? You know what? All right, so... <laughs> we're, we're pulling that up right now because that, that's what I'm curious about is if, if, if it's possible that he could have still seen him on that road okay so the one I'm gonna look scan, look for the distance for Pierce Field I'm gonna look exactly the time frame because if I'm being honest with you guys Austin too he sketches me out in this whole case all right so where is Pascagumi Road at it's in Tupper Lake, right? Uh, I don't believe it's in Tupper. It's like between <clears throat> Conifer and Tupper. So, where is Pierce Field? Okay. So it said at 1:40 a.m., Rich Rosen Treader saw Colin. Okay. And Austin said he saw him walking around 1:30 a.m. And then on his way back from Piercefield. So at 1.40, it was reported by Rich Rosen Treader. Ten minutes after Austin said he saw him. But then Austin saw him again on his way back, though, right? Yeah, but then nobody saw him again. All right, so I'm going to see something real quick. Get directions. This is our first time actually doing this right now. Yeah. I'm Save this for the podcast. Ask, uh... I'm gonna pull up the chat, guys. Did you? Uh, How do you spell that? Pascagumme. Where's the Where's the chat option? I'm not used to this. There we go. Chat. 
Okay, we got the stream chat pulled up. Let's pull this picture back up for you guys so you can. Colin Gillis. This is literally the case that started this channel. <clears throat> I uh, I was watching uh, top five disappearances, and this one came up, and then I remembered seeing the flyers all over my hometown, which is about an hour, maybe a little less from Tupper. And uh, so I started doing my own version of digging. I need to see this. What are you looking for? I want to see how I'm trying to figure out how far Pasco Young Lane Road is from Piercefield. Like, how long does it take to get there and then back to that road? <clears throat> I'm looking that up right now. <clears throat> it's about six minutes. <laughs> so, if you saw him at 130. Yeah. He would have had to see him again probably between like 1.45 and 2 a.m. And Rich reported seeing him at 1.40. Huh. According to sources that I'm not going to say also, this is this is all hearsay, so. But uh, there was also another person in the car with Austin, and it's just, it's weird to me that it's, that name's not getting mentioned at all. And, uh, if I don't know. It just it's a it's a weird time frame for him to see Colin go to Piercefield, <clears throat> come back by where Colin was, which you got to estimate like twelve minutes right there. Okay, so let's fast forward to recently when they were just digging up the um, farm, the Noble Farm property. Yes, who owns that? Uh, the Tuhi family, actually, I believe. I'm not. I'm not gonna say 100%, but I believe the Tuhi family owns the Noble Farm property. And I don't know what led to the recent dig or anything like that, but we do know a recent dig happened. And uh, we do believe it was the Tuhi family's property. And there was a a building that used to stand there, the farm, and uh, it got burned down like shortly after Colin had disappeared. Which is, it's all, it's all just really weird circumstances, and if, <clears throat> I don't know. Just, okay, so, so the guy who reportedly saw him twice walking down that road um, could possibly may, may be tied to a location where they were looking for the remains of, of Colin. Yeah, exactly. That, like, that's, that's, I, <laughs> I think that's fair enough to say. Yeah, like, so. and... If you, I've I've looked this up on the map before. It's where the Noble Farm property is is about ten minutes, ten fifteen <clears throat> minutes from where Colin disappeared from. And uh, I mean, it, it's not a hard story to put together if, like, if you look at it that the way. Fact that it was nighttime and he didn't have his jacket on, and there was snow. And it was a heavily wooded area. It doesn't really seem to me that he would have made it very far by himself. No, they just at all. So like somebody would have saw something when the search was began when the search happened because he couldn't have made it that far. Pot like literally, it's impossible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally. just literally somebody had to have took him somewhere or gave him a ride somewhere, but he didn't go anywhere on his own. No. It's not possible. And there's no, like, if you guys watched the video or read anything or just a lot, if any locals are in here watching, like, you know that there's no, like, there was no evidence seen of a hit and run. There was, it's just, it's a weird case. And I feel like it has a really simple explanation. <clears throat> One that doesn't, though. We're going to lead right into this. Not so simple explanation. <laughs> This one's uh This is a head scratcher. <clears throat> Nico Lisi. Yeah, that 
work on you guys. Okay. Nico Lisi. He's been... He disappeared a couple months before Colin, I believe. Right? Am I right? Hmm? Nico disappeared a couple months before Colin. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say... Because at first I was trying to be like, well, what if there's a connection? Then <clears throat> I realized Nico was actually last seen in Tennessee. And, um... One second, I'm pulling up a quick article right here so I can be straight with the facts. Um, so, yeah, Nico and his friend, it was Robert Knight, correct? Robert? I'm looking for it right now. Yes. Yeah, Robert Knight. Um, they left New York from Addison, and they ended up in Franklin, Tennessee, with a truck that they had claimed to be... Robert's grandfather, I believe. Yeah, uh, they. It's Nico and Robert Knight stopped to see Nico's uncle, and they told him it was Robert's grandfather's truck they were driving, and it turned out not to be. But um, Nico and Robert ended up in Franklin, Tennessee, and Robert returned home, but Nico never did. And um, Robert, I want to say within the first week. Of being home. He said he was dropped off by Nico. And Nico took his phone. That's what he told his parents. And, um... Nico was never seen again. Robert then overdosed and passed away within the first week of being home. And... No, shortly after that happened, Nico's Facebook page completely disappeared. <clears throat> and the truck was found years later in Tennessee completely scrapped and torn apart this is one that I don't I personally don't know <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know it just doesn't think. make sense to me yeah. like, so the first thing that I question is okay so they found the truck torn apart where did they find the truck exactly did they question the, where the, the people whoever owned or lived at the location where the truck was found um, because it just seems to me like, you know, if you do something to somebody and you're trying to dispose of every bit of evidence there is, you would dismantle a truck. <laughs> yeah, right? ex exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's it. like, um, <laughs> okay, so like, oh, you found the truck that he was for sure driving that didn't end up even being tied to the to them him or his buddy at all because his buddy said he was his grandfather's which actually it had turned out the truck was reported stolen yeah so one of them stole the truck or both or both and then so one got dropped off in in michigan supposedly but then nico ended up in tennessee with the truck obviously because the truck was found in tennessee so <clears throat> It just it's just a little weird to me how this kid ended up in Michigan, but the other one ended up in Tennessee, and then the kid overdoses a few days later. So yeah, it feels like it feels like there's a lot more going on mm -hmm. that we might not ever know because Robert Knight isn't here to say it. Yeah, like there's there's a lot going on here. I want like because some because Nico's Facebook deactivated shortly after Robert passed away, so that either implies that somebody else had his phone or Nico is still around. Because that was my initial thought was like, this kid's a runaway. But then as I dug deeper, it didn't, it looked less and less like that. And uh, it's just, it's hard to piece together because nobody's speaking. And Franklin, Tennessee has this like aura of being the one of the new USA's greatest small towns. And so... I mean, it it's not hard to picture they wouldn't want that being a stain on their their town. I don't know. It's just <clears throat> and that somebody has to know something. The the location that the truck was found at, completely scrapped, is a known party location. It's like like the people his age would be partying at. It's not like it was just found there randomly. Like it's like he ended up there at some point. So my question is: Is Nico like? His mom is pretty confident that he's no longer with us. She said that. But, like, I don't know. Like, it's it's reasonable to think that if Nico was still around, he could have sold that truck. 
Yeah. And it could have just ended up getting scrapped like that. He could just, okay, so like, this is not, okay, so it's not uncommon for someone to commit a crime, for, for someone that commits a crime, to relocate to somewhere they're familiar with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's not impossible for him to still be around. He, it's very possible. I mean, if he, I could very easily go to Indiana and nobody would know that I'm still around here. But yeah. I would be living very fine there. You know what I mean? So it's like if you have the right people connections, if you can anything that you can do here, you can do there. So it's like, I mean, I'm not. I don't know. I don't it's, know if he still is. But it's just, it's just very ironic that it, a crime was definitely committed in this. Like yeah. we know that a truck was stolen. So like, and he was a teenager. So right. you don't like. I don't know. Eight years now though. Like you'd expect it, but how long is the statute of limitation? Right, and, but there's also this being scared of coming back after all this time anyway. So yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, so yeah. if, if the statute of limitations is up, you might be thinking in his head, well, how do I explain to everybody when I do go back why I didn't even keep in contact with any of them? Yeah, it's like, because... You know I mean, that's like... I mean, at the same time, it's very possible something bad happened, but at the same, like, at the same exact time, it's like, just it's hard to pinpoint what what bad could have happened that's the whole exactly part. That, because we know his friend ended up in michigan and he ended up in tennessee so they were both fine after but, they separated but robert said nico dropped him off and took his phone right i i, I don't know about you but i i never let my friend be like that's my phone now right <laughs> true that's very true Maybe the but best. but it's also if they committed a crime and this kid was possibly gonna tell on him. Yeah, he was like, "Nah, bro, give me your phone. Maybe any they did any proof of yeah. anything that you have in your phone? Give me that shit." Yeah, because we don't know I mean? what happened between Addison exactly. and Franklin, Tennessee. That kid could have had anything in his phone—a picture yeah. or any phone call or anything that would have tied them to this crime that they did commit, or one of them committed. Actually, at this point, it would be both of them. The police would have arrested both. You find two kids in a car. We, neither of them are said. They're both lying about where it's coming from. They're both going to get charged with yeah, stealing the vehicle. Doubt. So it's just, it's, I don't know, man. It's a weird one. That's That one is, oh, man, it gets me. <laughs> it's, there's a lot to take in on it. And there's a lot of, like the Colin case, I feel like there's a lot that could be said that could change everything. Yeah, very, very small questions, too. Like, very just... The big very, difference, though, is the Robert Knight situation, I think. Yeah. Like, the key witness is no longer here. And under right. such weird circumstances. Right. And I feel like if he was here, I feel like this would all be solved, for sure. Yeah, I feel and like... Which it, makes me question the Colin case more, because every witness is is still here. Yeah. Every single one that was at the party... Um, the people that saw him on the way and nobody knows nothing. It just did it that more than one person knows what happened. I will say that. Juan Colin? Yes. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make you guys look at him again. More than one person knows what happened with that situation. Without a doubt. There's no if you like if you know and, what happened in that situation <laughs> and you aren't saying anything, you're just as bad. Like and and the, the also thing that that we know I I feel like I know maybe it's not it's not a fact but I feel like it's common sense that whatever happened to Colin was done by more than one person. I think it would be fair to say that one doesn't disappear with just one person doing it in the middle of the night, but he was seen. You know what I mean? So yeah. So whatever happened to him was done in a short window. Very short window. Because the police went looking for him. And because and that's the, not done by one person you, to do whatever to another human being. You can't, it, like, it takes more than that. I, yeah, I, that, I mean, and there was, like, there wasn't signs of a struggle. So it makes me feel like if he did hop in the car, it was with somebody he knew. You know, like. Right, you know, like somebody that offered him a ride but said that that, that he declined <laughs> the ride. <laughs> Very possible, yeah. <laughs> Sounds <insane. laughs> But. But then again, I feel like there is signs of a struggle if we think about it. They did find a couple items scattered yes, in the road. They did. So that leads to somebody snatched him off. Not so much scattered, they said, though. 
as they were like just laying on the side of the road, but it was just two stray items, so they wouldn't necessarily be scattered anyway. Right. It, it, if it was in his hand when it happened, or they found a tobacco pipe. We'll say tobacco right. because that's what the article said. Right. But uh, marijuana is a lot more <laughs> recreational than it was back then. But tobacco pipe and his ID. That's all. That's all that was found. Another weird thing, back to Nico for a second, is his ID was found in Addison, New York, by the by the post office and mailed to his family. Yeah, right before he went missing. Where like, is Addison, New York, and where is he? Working? It's by kind of by Buffalo. Okay. I think it's about an hour from Buffalo. I'd say. Yeah. All right, we're gonna. ID we're, found in Addison, kid. Dropped off in Michigan, Nico's truck in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. <clears throat> that whole thing's a mess. This is too. <laughs> I feel, I even feel the police know what's going on here, but they just need somebody to say something. We're going to go on to, we're going to play another episode of Unsolved and Upstate for you guys real quick. All right. Keep you guys here. Kill their mics. So we shouldn't be able to hear us right now. I'm gonna turn this up. See We're gonna play another episode of Unsolved and Upstate for you guys, real quick. Oh, we sound clean, actually. Guys here. Kill their mics. Here. I'm just waiting to see if our audio actually mutes right there. Army Sergeant Patrick Russ survived two tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan, and the 24-year-old was back on post at Fort Drum in New York for only about 30 days when he disappeared from a bar in Watertown, New York, in March of 2007. Six months later, his remains were found in a nearby field. Thirteen years have passed, and his mother, Judy Rust, is still fighting to find out what happened to her son. I just want to know what happened to him, Judy says. Years have gone by, and we still don't have any answers. Patrick grew up in Russell, New York, near Fort Drum, and after graduating from Edwards Knox High School in Herman in 2001, he went to vocational school to be a welder. But his plans changed a few months after the 9-11 terror attacks, and he was inspired to join the U.S. Army. He loved being in the Army, Judy said. It was his first taste of the outside world, and he loved seeing all the different places. Judy said Patrick returned home in 2007, and he was only home a month when he got his orders for his next assignment. On June 2nd, he would be off to Fort Lewis in Washington State, where he trained to become a staff sergeant. He was really excited when he told me, Judy said. I could hear it in his voice. Judy last spoke to her son on the phone just two days before he disappeared. Patrick told her he had decided to move to an off-base apartment in Watertown, New York, with another soldier. I told him that I didn't think it was a good idea, Judy said. It didn't make any sense. He would be leaving in a few months anyway. I know I was being a protective mom, but I just wanted him to stay on base. Perfect. Patrick went out to dinner with his roommate the night of March 15, 2007. His roommate decided he wanted to go to the tanning salon and her son wanted to go back to the apartment. So Patrick started walking in that direction. When his roommate arrived home, Patrick wasn't there. According to Watertown Police reports, Patrick was spotted a few hours later at 9 p.m. at a bar called Clueless on Arsenal Street, now known as Bad Apple. Around 1 a.m., he left the bar by himself, witnesses told police. It was the last time anyone saw him alive. Judy said no one heard from Patrick all weekend, and on the following Monday, his superior called Judy and her ex-husband with the news that Patrick was missing. An official missing persons report was then filed by the family with the Watertown Police Department, who launched their own investigation along with the military's. But the investigation soon ran cold and there was no trace of Patrick. On September 16, 2007, exactly six months to the date Patrick disappeared, a farmer cutting hay in a field in Jefferson County found the soldier's skeletal remains. The location of Patrick's remains was about five miles from the bar where he was last seen. DNA testing confirmed that the remains belonged to Patrick, according to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. A memorial service was held at Arlington National Cemetery in October 2007. A subsequent autopsy conducted in Washington, D.C. was unable to determine the cause or manner of death, according to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. 
but authorities found the case suspicious and continued their investigation. In 2010, when investigators were coming up empty on answers for Patrick's family, Judy hired private investigator Dennis Griffin. Griffin stated that when Patrick's remains were found, his dog tags were missing. He had $80 in cash in his pockets, an indication, Griffin believes, that Patrick was not robbed. He said Patrick's gloves were also in his pockets, which leads him to believe that Patrick didn't just walk off into an empty field in what was reportedly 18 degree weather that night. I believe he was picked up from the bar, Griffin said, and something bad happened after that. After 10 years of his own investigation, Griffin believes he knows who was involved with Patrick's death, but nothing has led to an arrest at this time. There are people who need to be questioned, Griffin said. I'm quite sure there's someone who has the information we need, and it could be something minor to break this case. Detective Aaron House with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office would not comment about potential persons of interest in Patrick's case, but did say the case is now being fully handled by only the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Detective House, who took over the case two years ago, said they are still actively investigating. We're still looking into every tip that comes in and we hope someone with information will come forward, Detective House said. The detective said he planned to sit down with Patrick's mother in March to go over new information she may have, but he said the coronavirus pandemic has delayed their meeting. Judy stated she will not stop fighting to find answers about her son's death. Over the years, she has posted hundreds of flyers across northern New York, set up a Facebook page, Sergeant Patrick Russ's mysterious death, and continues to stay in contact with investigators about potential leads. I won't give up, Judy said. Someone knows something about what happened to him. We just need to keep going. Judy keeps a posterized photo of her son in Afghanistan in her living room. Beside the photo is a plaque from Patrick's fellow soldiers that calls him a true warrior and states that true warriors never leave a fallen comrade behind. Judy reads those words often as she continues to search for answers. Anyone with information about Patrick's case is asked to call the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office at 315-786-2676 or email at detectives at co.jefferson.newyork.us. I'll also be posting a link in the description of the Facebook page previously mentioned in the video. Alright guys. Follow us on YouTube for more episodes. There's going to be a lot coming on the Ups Unsolved and Upstate series. And we are going to talk about this right now. Earlier we had mentioned we're going to be doing ghost hunts and uh, paranormal investigations. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite subject of what we do. <laughs> I ain't really. I like to hang back and let them tell me what happens. This is one of my goals to go to right here. Can I? Uh... No. I'm just gonna change the side for you guys. Rolling Hills Sanatorium. That, that's pro it's in New York, so it's one of my goals, just simply because it's one of the more famous haunted places close to us. Just about any reputable paranormal investigators have gone there. So that's one of my goals. Do you, uh, you got a place, even though you're uh, skeptical as hell about it? Yeah, man, just because I want to shoot a video here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Letchworth Village. Letchworth Village, I've yeah, heard of that place too. Pull it up on there. Yeah, well, right now. It, it looks crazy, bro. We we'll get two <clears> things done at once. Too. Background: uh, It's a residential. It was a residential institution located in Rockland County, New York, in the hamlet of Thiel's, built for the physically and mentally disabled of all ages, from the newborn to the elderly. Opened in 1911, Letchworth Village at its peak consisted of over 130 buildings spread out over many acres of land. That's amazing. Bro. It's a mental hospital too, huh? It, no, it's not a mental hospital. It's a mental oh, yeah. village, bro. Oh, it's so, um, so it's 130 like, uh, <laughs> buildings, bro. This is a whole town so like of crazy a, people. So it's literally a psycho village. It, it like, literally is. That's insane. So how big is the property? Does well, it's I mean, gotta be huge. I mean, it, at its peak, it consisted of over 130 buildings spread out over many acres of land. It was named for William Pryor Letchworth, who espoused reform in the treatment and care of the insane epileptics and poor children. 
What? So poor children live there too? <laughs> With all these psycho people. Right, bro. What so year was this active? Bro, <laughs> what the it, it opened fuck? in 1911. It closed in 1996. I'm just scanning through pictures of Letchworth Village as we talk about it too. Because there's obviously a bunch of photographs. This place is huge. Wow. On February 27, 1950, the first trial case of the polio vaccine in the United States was administered to an eight year old patient. What the? By Hillary Kaprowski after he tried it on himself. After the patient suffered no side effects, the vaccine was administered to 19 more of the institution's children. Out of, out of a total of 20 children, 17 developed antibodies to the virus and none developed any complications. So it's kind of a historic place, too. Wow, Reports look at of inadequate funding and improper care of the residents, including children, were present, were present dating back to the 1920s. That's crazy. Um, what? Accounts surfaced of residents being found unclothed, unbathed, and neglected, in addition to rampant abuse amongst the institution's residents. Staff also suffered abuse at the hands of co-workers, which included incidents of rape. So this place is dark, dark. Yeah. <laughs> Makes Rolling Hills sound fine. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. So, you're definitely gonna, if you guys stay tuned with uh, the Mystery Wild page, you're gonna hopefully see an investigation of this place. Look at the size of this. Yeah, bro, it's a hole. There's like buildings right here, too. Yeah. I'd love to shoot a video there with a drone. That's huge. So it's like, um, it's actually right outside of New York City. Oh, shit. Yeah, right near Yorktown, Monroe. Would love to go here. Not far from It's Kansas. It's definitely decaying. Yeah, oh yeah. Look at that, bro. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, That's just, really still there. Okay. Bro. Look at this. That's a that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, that's For one, a video like you said, but then we can just chill there and grab some food and then we go in at night again. Or wait. Night. Yeah. <laughs> what you thought? Night. Whoa. Why are we go in at night, bro. Oh, yeah. What? I'm not going in that room at night. Well, yeah, you are, bro. <laughs> bro, we can have, that room specifically. We can have mad lights, right? <laughs> no, we have night vision. Hopefully, we'll have everything. Oh, you're bugging. Running bro. by then. You're bugging. Out we have to be seen through that, a camera, bro. 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 <laughs> yeah. bro, I think the genuine fear is gonna be good, though. No. Good content. Good content. The fucking content. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Oh. Bro. He looks already possessed, bro. Oh, yes. Yeah, so maybe he's still there. Why they got him looking like that? We can bro. talk to him. Oh, wow, bro. We should be uh, equipment up, hopefully. And we will be definitely... I wonder if there's any, like... Yeah, I want to see it. Like, guy, we're, we're going to see if we can pull up a, a Letchworth Village video. The Haunted Letchworth Village. Yeah, here's a... Whoa. Is that it? Is that... Oh, we gotta do a video on this. Look at them, they get numbers too. I'm gonna pull it up on here for them. Yeah, um, terrifying ghost sighting at Haunted yeah. Asylum. Is hey, that... Mind you guys, we have not seen this video or watched it. So You're watching it with us right now. Yeah, so we're not verifying if this is actual legit or... What, You're watching it real time with us. <laughs> this, video, this video could be complete bullshit. We don't know, but we're going to throw it up on here. Uh, is that, that it right there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's... Yo, it's Travel Channel. Oh, it's Ghost Hunter. Ghost Adventures. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to pull this right up for you guys. Bro. 
Lutchworth Village Psychiatric Hospital. Since its closing in 1996, it has been the subject of paranormal sightings and even the focus of a poorly acted reality show called Ghost Adventures. Do you believe in haunting energy? Absolutely, I believe they're right there. Souls still inhabit this campus. I'm sorry, sorry. I didn't. I've been trying to stay out of your way. I, it seems like you're working on. Wait a second. Are you a ghost? <laughs> yes. Yes. Guilty. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you can go on doing. Are you reading O magazine? She's solving life's <laughs> mysteries. Also, there's a bang up recipe for corn on the cob in here. So. Do you just want me to? I can show you around. I, I'd like to be of assistance when possible. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm not the tidiest of housekeepers, but I try to... This is stupid, dude. No shit. All right, we'll, we'll pull this one up for... Hopefully this will redeem us a little bit. Oh, oh shit. I was just... I'm going to try to stay out of your way. I can't lie, that was I'm funny. glad that made it on there, actually. This is hilarious. This is like, fuck me. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. I was expecting to see some shit that might look like it could have been something. Nope, nigga. Ain't fucking... <laughs> I hate this shit, bro. Part one. 33 minutes? Yeah, we ain't got all that time, guys. Yeah. We're, no, we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Because we gotta. Why does it have 165 likes and 33 dislikes if it's some bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand this shit, bro. Oh, what shit. The fuck, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we got got right there, bro. I called it, dude. That's a yeah, this is, bro. Yeah, we, good thing you said it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, we're not with YouTube. Let's be some bullshit. That's great, though. Fuck yeah. All right, so we're gonna get to the wrap up here in a minute. Let's uh, let this play out for a minute. I have that light that he has. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think I it's showing you. I just forgot the battery it. for it. I guess I left it at my house somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's always got to be the dick involved. There's always, there's there's always the dick involved, no matter where you go. <laughs> <laughs> like you go somewhere with graffiti, dick involved somewhere. <laughs> there's a 666 in there, too. Yeah, for sure. Guarantee it. There's Trump 2020 also. Stephanie was here. <laughs> there's, there's a condom somewhere, too. And there's also fucking Randy loves Britney <laughs> on the wall somewhere. He does, though. He really loves Britney. I mean, he has to if he spray painted on. Yeah, he, he has to, yeah. <laughs> and she had to really be there, Stephanie. Who else could have spray painted it? Yeah, so this is just, yeah. So that's what it is. This is just Letchworth. Hopefully, uh, we, won't, we're, like, we won't be walking around with all these lights like that. Yeah, we will. No, we will not. The camera will. <laughs> no, it won't. The camera will. <laughs> the camera all right, guys. Well, I think we're going to call that the stream for today. We're going to be going live for another podcast, gather up some more things to talk about with you guys. We will have it a little more in order next time, too. Big facts. Um, Hopefully Mel will be here. Who? Oh, yeah. Where's that empty seat? Oh, there's a seat right next to you. Yeah, Mel. Look, look into his soul real quick. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back soon. More episodes of Unsolved and Upstate. We'll have a new podcast coming soon.